Hello, 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 everybody watching. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hey, Eric. Yeah. How's it going? Okay, yeah. It's going well. Thank you. And how about you? Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited for the first day of Advent of Code. Day zero. It's about yeah, to go down. It's actually attempt zero for me because I have never done this before. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Welcome to the Cool Kids Club. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two viewers at the moment. So hi, Denmark and hi, Leon. I hope you're oh, all nice. well. You know what? Yeah. Hey. People are starting to pop in already. People are starting to pop in. The folks are like, yeah. yay, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so day day zero of Advent of Code 2023. Yes. I mean, yeah. it, it's a good, it's a great day, you know, like it's bright and early here in Charlotte. You're over in Sweden. What, what, time, what time do you got over there? Not so bright, and it's uh, three in the afternoon. The snow has actually arrived, so it's starting to get better. But unfortunately, the sky is fairly gray. But oh, no. as long as we have snow, it's all right. Well, you know, the snow, the snow does make up for it, I guess. I suppose. Yeah. I'm, I'm Definitely trying to get away from the snow as possible yeah yeah uh, i prefer the warm i prefer warmth over over cold but if we're gonna have cold give me snow you at least have to have snow yeah. <laughs> um you know what let me see if i can find uh let me see if i can see who is watching right now from my i know i've got mm -hmm. some viewers hi viewers thank you for joining um, I don't have the uh, shared chat over here, but oh yes, oh, I do. No. I oh. have mine at least, so I hope we we got all of it. Anyways, you have a couple of viewers. I have a couple of viewers. Should we uh, introduce ourselves? Let's get started. Why don't you go first? Yeah. So I'm Eric. I'm from Sweden, where we currently have snow, obviously, since I just told you. I run a small consulting and con contracting company. Um, I stream basically uh, two to four weeks, uh, sorry, two to four hours a week. Um, and I stream .NET and mostly at the moment migration from uh, framework over to core or net eight. So that's really Hi. short about me. How about you? I am Kaya. I am actually very new to streaming. Um, I work for All Zero as a developer advocate. And on Twitter, I'm Black Girl CTO, so please go follow me. I am coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina, where it is nowhere near as cold as it is in Sweden. Thank goodness for that. And I am actually prepping to go to Jamaica right now. Like, So this is the last thing I'm doing prior to my holiday in Jamaica. So I'm extra excited, not just for Advent of Code, but um, also for my holiday in Jamaica. <laughs> Will you be coding from Jamaica? Uh, no. No, no. <laughs> Taking some oh, real no. time off. <laughs> Taking time off. I'm going to be on a cruise. So um, I'm intentionally not getting the internet package for my computer. I'll have it for that my That sounds really nice, having some offline time. I oh. would go insane, but uh, after a while, it might be nice. It might be. It's going to be It's going to be amazing. It's a reggae cruise, so, like, it's... Wonderful. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have a great, yeah. great time. Oh, yeah. And also, I'm a data developer as well. Um, so yeah. so we're, we're here on that. And I don't care what yeah. anybody has to say about it. No. Don't know this. <laughs> awesome. So... I've actually been in the .NET sphere since, oh, I don't know, 2004 or so. Oh, wow. So I've you been uh, around here for uh, for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I started yeah. around 2011-ish. But, you know, yeah. like, you have, I don't know about you, but I, when I, when I say I've 
say like all the years of experience that I have, it's like really a year of experience, you know, 10 plus times. Cause you know, you work on different code bases, you work on different things. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, you restart projects or new projects all the time. And yeah, it's great fun. I love the ecosystem. I love the community. And uh, for everyone, if you're watching on not Twitch, I can tell you that we have a very alive and vibrant and very wholesome community of uh, developers uh, streaming code over here. So come on over. Take a look at what you can find. Uh, it's a yeah. great place to be. Yeah. It is. It is. So fun. And everybody's been so warm. You know, like I, I've been streaming for mm, maybe about a month now. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm yeah. really new. When I say I'm new, I am new. Like brands making yeah. new. Baby in the game. And, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, but it, it's been a great experience so far. I like the fact that like it's okay to, um be just fresh you know it's okay to to yeah. not really prepare a lot it's okay to you know kind of figure it out as you go there are mistakes all of those things oh hey jess everyone, everyone needs to start somewhere and um if you um you know you, know, you got to start somewhere and the whole point of streaming is making mistakes and following people who make mistakes. Otherwise, we'd all be on YouTube watching curated content and just, yeah, Thanks. getting stuff fed into our minds. Here we have more of a back and forth. We can talk about things. We fail, we get help, and we have a great time, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then I love, I, I, you know, this is my first time um, streaming code with. I guess. So now I used to, like, okay, I will say I've done streams before, but they weren't live coding. Like before, yeah. you know, it was just like kind of talk show type deal. But yeah. live like this. Is a different beast. And I really like the, the, uh, having a guest part, especially someone mm -hmm. who, um, I can kind of, you know, lean on because we all need somebody to lean on. I will try to help you. Uh, hold on. Uh, ah, thank you. Yeah, that was spam. Of course, oh, it was spam. Um, Let's delete that. Um, yeah, it showed up. It in is. The one well, but so should we uh, get started and uh, look at the uh, task the for Advent of Code Day Zero? Yes, let's go through it. Um, okay, so day one, trebuchet. Trebuchet? Trebuchet, I think, yeah. Okay, so here's the background. Something is wrong with global snow production. Hmm. You expected to take a look. The elves have even given you a map on it. They've used stars to mark the top 50 locations that are likely to be having problems. You've been doing this long enough to know that to restore snow operations, you need to check all 50 stars by December 25th, which is Christmas. Collect stars by solving problems. Two, uh, excuse me, by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. Ha ha ha. Yeah. I love the story. I love the story. I'm yeah, yeah. the <laughs> And uh, we were talking a bit about this, but apparently, yeah, there are two puzzles a day. Yes. So we'll try to get both done, but it'll be a matter of time. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. All right, so you try to ask why they can't just use a weather machine. Not powerful enough? And were they even sending you, oh, well, where they're even sending you, blah, 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 blah. I'm having problem, problems with uh, English and reading today. And where they're even sending you, the sky? 
and why your map looks mostly blank. You sure ask a lot of questions. But hang on. Did you just say the sky? Of course. Where do you think snow comes from? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when you realize that the L's are already loading into the trebuchet, please hold still. We need to strap you in. Okay. As they're making the final adjustments, they discover that their calibration document, your puzzle input, has amended or has been amended by a very young L who was apparently just excited to show off their art skills. Consequently, the elves are having trouble reading the values on the document, similarly to how I am having trouble reading the, <laughs> the problem. <laughs> um, so I can relate to the elves. Uh, the newly improved calibration document consists of lines of text. Each line originally contained a specific calibration value that the Elves now need to recover. On each line, the calibration value can be found by combining the first digit and the last digit in that order to form a single two-digit number. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So here are examples. Oh, okay, so basically what it sounds like we're trying to do is create, what, 12, 38? Yeah. Since the first line is one A B C two, we remove all the letters and we'll end up with one and two, which is twelve. Right? Uh huh. Okay, twelve, yeah. thirty-eight, fifteen, and seventy-seven. Wait. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. And the oh. last one there only has a single number, so it's the same number both from the start and from the end. All the numbers are two digits. And the second last has multiple numbers in it, but it's the same thing. We take the first and the last digit and um, combine those. Oh my goodness, right? Eric! That's my understanding of the problem. Eric, yes, that is. I mean, you are understanding the problem correctly. I feel like, but yeah. this seems like. I mean, how do you feel about it? Of course, how I feel about it. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I feel like we should be able to get this done. I feel right? like we should too. Yeah. Um, uh, I I'm usually don't do TDD and test-driven development, but I feel like these problems will be a perfect time to try. Uh, have you okay. ever done TDD? Say that again? Have you ever tried TDD, test-driven development? Um. I am familiar with the concept, yes. Mm -hmm. However, um, not like I'm familiar with the concept, but but yeah, walk yeah. me through it. Let's, let's, let's walk through. It. Yeah. So the basic idea is you don't create the implementation; you create the test first. So you write That's the right, test. Right. It won't even compile because you haven't got anything to uh, to do the work, basically. Sure. And then you start creating the code to do the work and the tests will fail. And then you start working until the tests pass. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, yeah that it, makes sense. It, I mean, that, that gives you a really great way to like have really good code coverage on all of your tests. So exactly. You know, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I like the way, yeah. I like the way you think, Eric. <laughs> I like the way you yeah. think. Yeah, I usually don't like TDD, but in this case, the problem is like made for it. So, okay. I mean, yeah. so yeah, like in general, um, look, just that she loves TDD, uh, mm -hmm. I, and I, there's there's been a role or two that I've had that that's kind of been the way that we that we rolled, and it just seems like a lot of time. Okay, yeah. it's a lot of time, but like I since agree, we're, we're doing this small problem. Why not? I mean, it works. <laughs> when I solve things, I usually uh, do it multiple steps, and I have no idea about the interfaces or the actual, you know, system design before I start working on it. Which means that TDD means I have to go back and update the tests over and over and over, and I change the uh, input parameters and I change the uh, um, 
the interfaces and implementations that this depends on. So it's a lot of back and forth. Mm -hmm. But we'll, uh, I think we'll try this, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to remove my screen and we can yeah. add your screen. Coming to the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I did sheet a tiny bit. I created a solution. Okay. And I created a, a, a project for the implementation and a project for the tests. Okay, I have so done first absolutely of all, zero code. Wait. Yeah. I think everything Come again? Because uh, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. All I'm seeing is hello world. Oh yeah, oh. yeah. I haven't written any code at all. Oh, okay. Solution. Here's explorer. hello world, right? Oh yeah, that's what I see. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. We're on the same page. So here. I haven't written any code. I've just created the projects and I've added a dependency that way so that the test project can see task zero. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So let's uh, look at the tests. So we have test one here. I think that's a bad name. Uh, what should we call it? Because I think what we want to do is we want to test these line by line first. The total problem is summing up all of the lines. So this would be 12 plus 38 plus uh, 15 plus 77, yeah? But right. we're going to do this as a unit, which means we're going to test each of these lines. I just okay. copied them, jumping over here, and I can't remember this. There is a, yeah, test case. Test case, and we'll do like so. Did that not work? I don't see it. Oh, right. We need the expected output as well. So that would be, let's put 12 there, right? And then we need a string. Input string expected. Sorry, int expected. Oh, does this make sense? Okay. So um, I created. It does make sense. But yeah, I, just I created a test case here. First, we have a test which marks this as you know something to test. Yep. Then we have the test case, which is a way of repeating the test over and over and over. Absolutely. Hello, Belin. Hey, Squiggly, and hey, Corey. Uh, so we'll add multiple test cases to this function, which means it'll execute over and over and over with the input here. And here is what we want to expect out. So we'll assert our result against this. Not okay. sure if that makes sense, but that I think it will sense. as we go on. It so let's does. start with just just start with one. So this is the actual test that we want to run. But wait, Eric, right? for some reason, on so on my end, like I know we did go through this this check and everything, right? Yeah. But can you see me like I, I can't see I see you and in my preview I see uh, what I'm doing. Can you guys see it? Uh Corey, I this is any unit, I believe. Uh yeah, it's end unit. You can't see what I'm doing. I can see what I can only see what you're doing on from my, from the screen. I cannot see what you're doing from live share. So, oh, uh, live share. Did you connect to it? Um, I am connected because I'm in the project. So, yeah. uh, if you go to the live share uh, tab, yep. And uh, that one's the same for some reason. What's it up to? What just happened? This is the wrong project. Okay, so something just happened. I need to uh -huh. open this. Oh, okay. I think you might have gotten disconnected there. Let's open up live share again. Okay. Um, cancel, cancel. This we can share and go through and see the same things. I think All it's right. because I opened this thing here. Wait, is it still in the wrong project? What the heck is going on? Good start to the stream, technology. right, guys? Technology, uh -huh. definitely recent. <laughs> Where the heck is my project? 
right click advent of code <laughs> is this like is this working we have the files there we go now i have my code here let me start a live share session I'm going to copy the link and I will paste this in our private chat again. Sounds good. Thank you so yeah. much. You are too kind. And then I believe you can select follow on me so you'll jump around and see exactly where I am. Yep. I'm frozen. Are you frozen? Hold on. I wasn't. I don't think so. Oh, Corey. Now you are. You are frozen. Oh, okay. look at that. Look at Wyatt. But over here, I can see me moving. It is, it is cold. It's cold. It definitely <laughs> is cold, yeah. Smirking squiggly. It is cold in Sweden, yeah. so it's no surprise that Eric is frozen. I'm um, freezing from right. time to time. Let me uh, see if I can lower the resolution on my camera. Let's go to high definition instead, see if it's something to do with uh, um, the StreamYard. All right, so I load it to 720. I think that should be more than enough of this. Cool. All right, let me get yeah. back into. So if you're in live share now, I'm getting back in because you know I have to like do the whole thing where I yeah into my uh, where I put it into my BM and so let's feed it back live share window. Uh, Corey says it's cold in Philadelphia as well. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, uh, definitely. Is the camera working better, Corey? Or is it still freezing up? We have minus 4C over fine. here. Oh, wonderful. Thanks, yes. Okay. Uh, I can't see us, a part see us a participant yet. Yep, I'm coming. Um, I, yeah, yeah, no worries. Sorry. Uh, Smirkin, we're doing uh, Advent of Code. So we're going to set up and do TDD for this. Uh, while you're joining, I'm going to change the name of this test to... Um, Oh my gosh. What should we call this test? Um, uh, okay, so what exactly are we doing? Let's go back. I, we're we're uh, doing the basic test case of, you know, we get a string and we want to output the number that we found in it. Okay. Um, num number from string? Or, uh, yeah. Does so, you work? know, the basically we want to check the correct answer for um, um, uh, on uh, string, on valid string outputs uh, correct, correct number. number. Yeah. Boom. I like it. I like, you know, input, output, input, and expected result. Hey, Solar. And it's the only place where I use, uh, what's it called when you have underscores? Uh, it's not snake case. Um, snake is minus. Is it kebab? No, it's not kebab case. It is kebab case. Where is the snake? It kebab is. Case. Yeah, no. I think it's snake case. It's snake case. Kebab case is when you have uh, dashes and minus signs. Snake is underscore. Yeah, snake right. is underscore. Thank you. <laughs> and did you manage to? No, you haven't managed to connect quite yet, have you? 
I think, yeah, I'm, I'm connecting. But you know what? I might end up just using v VS Code like um, I was trying to make me do yesterday. Because yeah, but then reason, we get I it working know. on that, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just way. go ahead and do that for the sake of time because mm. my VM is embarrassing me at the moment. <laughs> aww, aww, aww. That's okay. It's okay. I'm not easily embarrassed. But, no. Um, no worries. Come on. Pop it. Make it work. <laughs> you know. There we go. Someone just joined. Aha. Here we are. All yeah. right. I'm gonna just... And I think you can click me and uh, follow me, right? Yep. So, follow. Yep, yep. I'm following. I'm following you right now. now. I just realized something. And uh, notice that this is going to be a bit annoying but we have the correct results for all of these right so what i'd like to do is up here uh, i would like to create a private um, um let's see string no ints of let's see that's the output i can't remember how to do this let's do a dictionary that's good private dictionary spring int uh, correct results uh, since we have all of these results already yeah for the test cases down here mm -hmm. you just enter those up here so we'll do one abc2 and 12 that's the first one we have this one, which is the next one, which is 38. I have no idea what this thing just did. It tried helping me. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. This is supposed to be 15. And then we have one more, which is trebuchet, which is supposed to be 77. All right, so now we have a list of the expected um, results from our um, uh, from the uh, list of uh, results to test against that we got from um, uh, Advent of Code, right? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I keep jumping back and forth. So, first of all, now I think we should try and locate the expected result for this test case. So, we'll um, do this, I think. Expected. Uh, I really should turn uh, Copilot off. Why? Let me look here. Uh, well, because they like didn't it. they didn't want us to use it. Okay. That's I'm going fine. to okay, so I need to reopen it. Ah. It looks um, like that. expected value. Okay. So that is a range. Act and assert. Have you ever used that pattern? So Basically, what we're doing is gathering all the things that we need to gather from our test case, right? Uh, yep. And then test that's right there. And, then and the, that would be uh, right there. Deal. And down here, we are checking. Yep. Right? So now we have an expected value and we have an expected um which means we, we can remove this actually because we don't need that. So we can do this. So we have input and we have an expected output value from that, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Captain. Uh, from this, we can do var calculated equals something like that. So it just helped me. It told us to get a calculate function. We're probably going to change the name of that. Happy Friday, Captain. Didn't you just stream? I think you did. Um, and I'm getting messages. 
What serves a different purpose in the U.S.? Uh, AAA, I think. Isn't that like a service to get your oh, car? Oh, your car? Like if your car breaks down? If your car breaks yeah. down you're on the side of the road? Yes. Yes, uh, that is. There's true. actually one more thing you can do, but that we're probably not going to do today, and that is assume. Do you know what that's for? No, tell me. Assume. Uh, that's for if you do calls into things and you're setting like clauses up, under assume, mm -hmm. you do a search as well. So it's assuming that your start um, state is correct. Okay. So cool. it's basically an assert, but before we run our act. So we're making sure that it's, you know, starting from a good state. Right. Yeah, but we're not going to need that this time around. Yeah. Uh, what we want okay, to do now not? is... Why don't we need it this time around? Because, because we we're have the only yeah. arrange that we do is we're getting a value from this dictionary up here, right? Okay. This is the only thing what, that we're doing. We're looking up that um, uh, that value, so we're not setting state and anything. So we, you don't need to assume anything. Okay. If we had like a, if we knew the class up, and that constructor might set up values inside of it for some reason. Uh, mm -hmm. We could uh, assume that those values are set to something. So if we had just some pseudocode var test equals new test 15, we could assume that test dot input value. Uh, sorry, we should search equals. 15 right yep okay there so that would make it so that we make sure that this actually works as well and that we're not you know getting an error down in the assert because our arrange was not in a good state okay and since we're only arranging and getting expected values from a dictionary we don't need that this is going to be a temporary name for the moment. But what we want to do is we want to assert our equal expected and calculated, right? Yep. Yep. So let's grab these. And we're going to set up a couple of test cases as well. And apparently it also grabbed my, sorry. Backslashes. Why are you doing that? What? Let me um figure out this why live, live share is not doing what it needs to be doing. Ugh. I'm trying to think of a name for this class which doesn't exist yet. I'm really bad at naming today. Um, we want a okay. class that does the calculations here. That grabs things from the string and probably the same one that also sums them up. So that would be uh, sum of sum of string. Yeah. So, it was for one of them. Would equal... And then two classes, right? Yeah, first we need a class. Uh, we we only want to test uh, test them string by string now, and then we're going to build the one that tests multiple strings at once. Okay. Right. So, so what I want to do is um, um, test class more or less, but advent of code day one. Uh, calculator. Let's call it that. Let's just do calculator. We're going to set sum of string. Uh, actually, we're going to set that and calculate row.
on valid string row outputs the correct number. So what do you think of this test? Does it look about all right? Now I'm looking from the screen because live share is failing me again. <laughs> but uh, it looks good. It looks good. Yeah. We've got our cases. We're arranging, acting, and asserting. And yes, everything looks good. And as yeah. Um, and exactly, Corey, since we have a couple of correct responses or correct results already, then TDD is uh, great. And hi, Disco. Um, so let's start trying to implement this, shall we? Okay, hold on one Where moment. Let me just get yep. my live share going again because, Absolutely. well, you can start doing that. I need to. My solution explorer decided to hide itself. There we go. There it is. Because it only wants to work on... Um... I'm just going to create a new class, a new file. Okay. Sure, compact view, that, that. I want to make right. this public. I think I'm good now. I think I'm back. Yeah. I think I'm back. We'll do public int that string input string. Now, since we have that, let's just return zero. This means if we go down to test explorer, I need to build the solution first. Object reference. Oh, right. I need to use calculator. There we go. Oh, because it's, are you getting the object reference not set? Yeah, exactly. But now I got it. My computer is really slow at the moment. But yeah, now we have uh, four tests down here. Okay, good. Which is now, technically one test, but with uh, four different inputs. Right? Okay. All right. Uh, Corey, the thing I have that hides my config values is no docs, which is actually an extension I built. It's available on the um, marketplace, and it's 100% free. It looks at your XML and your um, JSON, and it hides values, but not the schema. It's great for streaming, because I always tend to open my config files or my um, secret files on stream, and then I go, oh, crap. I should have hidden that. But let's start off with running the tests. Uh, so I'll do that. And entirely unexpectedly, everything failed. Well, that was, yeah, we did I wonder that. why. Yeah, we did, because okay. we have expected 12 was 0. Expected 15 was 0, because we're always returning 0. OK. So let's take a look at the um, um, let's take a look at the um, calculator then. Inputs. I'm I'm just going to create a list here so we know what we're working with. Right. Mm -hmm. let's see, and I remember the key for this, but it is. Pick. Uh, Alt Shift and like that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to grab the first and the last number in a string. Question is, do we want to do this the easy way or the hard way? Let's do it the easy way. I like easy buttons. The easy I mean, way. All right. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking like Let's do for each var four character. Each. Yep. <laughs> Crap sake. See what it did. This is why I don't like Copilot sometimes. What did it... Let's see. What did it do? It did for each character in input string. If it's a digit, console right line that digit, or actually that character. Okay. Which is kind of bad. This is the slow way, but I really hate that it did it for me. 
Um, do we you just that? disconnected from the uh, session. So I'm actually going to do a thing here. I'm going to restart my studio with Copilot turned off. Okay, so do you we gonna... don't want Copilot to solve everything for us, right? Sure, sure. Now, yeah. so are you going to do that and send me another link? Or are we uh, yep. I'll delete that so we can start over and I okay. will grab That's the link idea. as soon as my system decides to be started. I thought they made this a lot faster in the latest version, but apparently not. And I'll paste that link. Here you go. Okay. So live share. Tell me when you're in. On VS Code, and I'm it, every time I when I click the link, here's the thing that's happening because this has been happening this whole stream. So when I click the link, <laughs> it just opens it up in a browser, and that is not yep. a good experience. Okay. No. Uh, uh, I mean, you could, uh, I think we looked at this, you could always go up here and join a live share session. Did you right. try that? Um, but I'm on VS so Code the now. Link. So let me, yeah. let me Google this. Join a live share. Oh, chat, chat. How do you join a live share on VS Code? Mm. Yeah, I have no idea. Let me look real I know, quick. Like, I, we've got some really smart people in the chat. Mm. Let's look in here. Save. You know, when you click the, just as you click the link, but when you click the link, it just opens up in a browser. That's the problem. Yeah, I think you probably need an extension or something from uh, for. I have the extension. Code. Okay. And okay. Uh, what if you just search for it? But even now, it doesn't even get. I mean, if you uh, search for it in the middle there. Search. Um, so maybe okay. Uh, no. Okay, search so there's a it. banner on top that says "Open on VS Code." Okay, open on VS Code. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh. It's telling me to download VS Code, and I have it already downloaded. Okay. Open in VS Code. Uh huh. Announcement. Terms of use. Of course, this is working out. Oh, oh. boom. Boom. You're so in. Smart. There we go. Left though. Do you see me? Ah! Okay. All right. Where are you? Okay. Yes. Which file are you in? The advent of calculator.cs. Oh, yeah. I can see you. I can see you down there. <laughs> so, yeah, we have our Victory. test cases. Yeah. yeah. So the brute force way is if we loop it from the start and if it's a digit, we grab it and then we reverse it and we'll loop it again. And if it's a uh -huh. digit, we'll grab it. We make a string out of those two and we uh, do an int uh, try parse, right? That's uh, the easy that's way of doing it. That's the way of doing it, right. So Okay, so we we're moving through each each string. What we about, uh, what about having a separate um, method that gets the first digit? So yeah, we could do that. Like get the first digit. Be a private int get first digit. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then we do int first digit equals get first digit with the input string. Let's also do int last digit get last digit input string. And here's where I think it gets complicated because now we need to do int result equals 
first digit times 10 plus last digit, right? Uh -huh. Because the first one is going to be, you know, yeah, it's going to be 10 bigger. I'm not sure what to call it. Yeah. Um, so, did it get last digit? Let's see. And now. Focus my attention. Oh, did I do that? Okay, I'm trying to get you yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I'm a fan of live share. Yeah, no, sure. I mean it it works great when it works. <laughs> okay. But I see you. I don't I see that you are typing, but I don't see anything yeah. that you're typing. So I don't oh, see anything, but it. yeah, we did try typing and something. It, it was working. So yeah. you're under the return line right now. Yes, but see, that's all I see. Um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. So yeah, that let's way, look at your screen. So that way you can hey, see what you. I'm doing. We're dealing with technical issues. And we're technical people, so we should be good. <laughs> we should be. So, okay, so now we should have your screen, right? Yep. Oh, that is old. Right? Hey, where did we save right the now? file? Save it? No. What if you close the file and reopen it? No, it's still not updating. It's not. And it, that it's is weird. It. It's so odd. But you know what? Yeah. Um. What is your file? Like, I, I've saved it on accident. So I hope I didn't just, like, uh, delete all the stuff that you had. So let's check. Check on your side. See if it's still there. Yeah, everything is still here for me. Okay. Well, you know what? Yeah. How about this? We're just going to continue on and um, you drive, I'll talk, pilot, co-pilot. Yeah, that's right. And then we'll uh, figure it out next time, right? Yep. Okay, so we have two functions now, get first digit and get last digit. Let's do some magic. All right. Input string dot reverse. Mm. Ooh. Think we can do that? No. Get last. Last. So you could do a last character. And then do a first character again. Yes. Yeah. Returns a sequence sequence whose elements correspond to those of the input sequence in a reverse order. So what I want to do here is I want to do a two string, two list. array two, two, uh, two string Why not? not sure what we'll get from two string but let's try this I mean we're doing TDD right yeah why not let's try it to reverse string Story and be restricted mode like restricted mode in VS code or yeah it said something about restricted mode and on the top there for me but Oh, could be. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But let's get through the problem because you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so did you see what I did here? Um, I'm not sure if this is correct, though. Because this part might return a string saying I enumerable of string or of character. Oh, it could. But we'll, we'll see that. Good. All right. Hmm. So should we look for the first character in the string now? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So how do you want to do that? Um. We can do this the brute force way, which is looping over it. And as soon as we find a digit, we will return that. Or 
we can do with uh, regex. And I hate regex, but it will I be faster to execute. It, it is so funny because I just got finished doing a leak code regex exercise. And oh my God, I really don't want to go that mm -hmm. direction. But let's do. Let's brute force it. Brute force. And that is the doing a for loop. Yeah. yeah. For each bar character in input string. Right, so we're looping over input string. If so, so are we gonna case, ask see if the character is an int? Yeah, we're gonna see if it's a digit. Yeah, I agree with you, Corey. Um, regex is the reason that Perl is a write-only language, and I say that as an ex-Perl programmer. Um, mm. I think uh, I have a really funny thing I keep saying, at least I think it's funny, and that is that Perl is a, is a write-only language. You code right. in it in the uh, before lunch, everything makes sense, everything works, everything's perfect, and then you go to lunch and you come back and you're like, I don't understand any of this. I better restart <laughs> over. That sounds like me when I have, when I'm looking at old code that I wrote like what yeah but th this is like worse the problem is that regex is a first party citizen if you want to say that in pearl so you can start <laughs> writing a regex pretty much everywhere or oh, anywhere goodness. and well, it puts the results in you know secret variable names so dollar one just becomes a thing and dollar underscore just becomes another thing and hmm. there is no way unless you know what they're going to be. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you, you never set them. It's just secret things that happen. It's horrible. Uh, oh, my goodness. There's See, a fun that's thing, though. That's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a fun Matt. thing here. Hmm? You know that everything is a class in .NET, right? Yeah. So, including char or character. On here we have is digit. Oh yeah. So if it's a digit between zero and one, or sorry, zero and nine, it returns true. Okay. And I'm and not entirely sure, but I think you can actually do it in. No, no, never mind. I thought you could do it in multiple number. Um, it's called, you know, hex, octa, huh, octa, fits. Ha. Yeah. <laughs> I um, thought you could do that, but apparently not. But I do think that's a good direction to go. I mean, thank goodness. Yeah. This is why I love, this is why I love t-shirts. So if you just look here, it's digit, right? It's digit. We'll check character. And in that case, we know that we have a number in here. So we could just do uh, return in 32.parse. We don't need to try parse here because we know right. that we have a digit. Right. We know for a fact that now, it's going to come from something. Yep. So let's do character dot two string because parse only takes a string, I believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we need to convert that character back to a string and then return it. And if and we then return go that up, as a digit. Yeah, we return okay. that as a number, right? 32, yep. And if we couldn't find anything, what do we want to do? If we have no numbers in the string, should we throw an exception or return a minus one or? Uh. I don't I'd say I'd say that no digits is a an exception to what the code should work like. So right. I think so we, we should throw an exception it. and then we can um catch it. Oh, okay, oh, wait. You Corey says an exception may all the way oh wait. May all the way Yeah, to break the test. Okay, wait. So I'll he thinks that. we should throw an exception and let that propagate all the way out. Me all the way to the cool. And and Matt yeah. says that the regex would be a good use case for chat GPT. And I am a proponent of chat GPT. We are not using regexes today. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I would 100% let ChatGPT write my regex. Yes, absolutely. And then I just test it to make sure that is correct because I wouldn't even try to understand it, especially not when a computer has written it because that will probably make it even worse, right? Right. <laughs> right. So in third two parse returns argument null exceptions, format exceptions, or overflow exception. I think argument null and overflow are the correct ones. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry, the wrong ones. The wrong, we could oh, do yeah. format because uh, that tells us that, oh, the format of this string is bad because we couldn't find yeah. any numbers. We could also do invalid operation. I think that fits. Um, but I think format is better because it's literally like the format of this string is bad because we have no numbers in it, right? Exactly. Yep, I think let's go with that. Let's go with format. With exception. Uh, what do we have in here? We have a message and we have an inner. So let's do a message. Uh, input string. Input string. Contains no numbers. Sorry, no digits. So, okay. Yeah. So, are we going to make it? Okay. Recalling that, and we are actually already executing it up here. So, let's just try and return result, shall we? Sure. Let's what do, do you it. Think happens? What do you think will happen? Will our tests pause? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, I'll, um, what happens I next? think I will bet. Two dollars on it working and eight dollars on it not working because I think we might get a, a string with you know I enumerable. I think this line here might fail because that might give us a you know the name of the class returned from reverse, which is I enumerable of jar or it gives us the characters reversed. I'm not sure. Let's try it. But, oh, quick, quick, real quick though. Now that I'm thinking about yep. it, like we reverse the string, so we're not gonna get the same mm -hmm. number. We're not gonna get the same digits as, as we expect. At least that's what I think. Uh, you don't? I mean, Will we the not reverse, reverse of one ABC two would be two CBA one, right? Right. So that we'll becomes at. that. And then we look for the first digit. So we'll look for the first digit in the strings. And I think that would uh -huh. work. And same thing with trebuchet here, because then we'd first go, sorry, and uh, we'd go that way. And then we'd go that way. So we'd find okay, seven. So no place. Okay, are we reversing the string and then reversing it back after we have it? Let's see. And no, because reverse string is local. It doesn't actually affect the input string, right? Well, let's run it and see what happens because. Yeah. Yeah, let's run it. Let's run it. Sorry, then we're going to break the test. Yeah, I'd say $8 that we are breaking it. <laughs> and hey, something is weird, isn't it? We got 11, 11. 31 and 71, which means that we didn't break that part, but something else is not working. Yeah. I think I can see a common um, common thing here. Okay. All the numbers end with one. End with one. End with one. Okay, let's... let's and I'd what? say that the first number is correct because we have seven, seven, Three, three, one, 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 one. But okay. all our numbers end with one. So the last digit is always one for some reason. Ah. Uh, so uh, how about we? How about we debug this? Let's debug it. Yeah. Let's put a breakpoint before we calculate anything. And let's right-click a test and debug it. All right, so we have the input string one A B C two, right? Uh huh. Let's step in. One A B C two. First character is one. One. That is in fact a digit. 
correct. So we returned one. I think that's yep. correct. That now let's correct. step in to get the last digit and see what it did there. Mm, this is the contents of the of the reverse string, which isn't ah. really a reverse string. Yeah, that was what I was worried would happen. Well, I think that's what I was worried would happen too, because it was like, all right, like you reversed it, and and then two stringed it, and the reverse gave us an I enumerable. Okay, all right. I think yeah. that was what I was trying so, to communicate too. Like if we reverse, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe so we I have didn't a bug. Explain it right, but and if you look here, where do you think you got the one from? Because we checked for initial. the first digit. The first digit. In this string, right? Let's uh -huh. start from the start here. Bang. There's the one. Uh, so our last digit always uh, returned as a one. Will always return as a one. Is it because? Um, all right. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, we're looking for the string. It should have been 2CBA1, but instead it's this. And then we're looking for the first digit in this, which will be that one there. So it's the first digit. We're bringing, returning the first digit that we... Um, that we found, yeah. That we found in, in general. Okay. Yeah, in yes. this string. And this, the, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So reverse. So let's uh, let's try using the immediate window. Okay. Yeah. We have the input string, not reverse. This is a little bit tiny. I'm not entirely sure how to make it bigger. I could try this. So that, that gives cool. us a type, right? Input string dot reverse dot two list though. To array, I think is better. That gives an gives us an array in order that we want, right? Mm -hmm. And what if we do? How do we make a string out of the array? It's string. Um, no. Um, array. Two strings. First, <laughs> two array, two string, like that. No, that gave us system char, an array okay. of system char. So I think no, we need to I do a, yeah. I think what we need to do is we need to look at encoding. Uh, default dot um, get string. And into this, we will send a list of characters. No, that's just bytes. So who owes us eight dollars? Is the question. Yeah. Uh, and were we betting each other? Do I owe you eight dollars? I'm trying to figure out how this works. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do it the old-fashioned way, shall we? Okay, let's do it. What's the old-fashioned way? How to create a string from a char array dot net. First response, and it's simply new string chars. New, oh, character array. So new string or the string constructor has the ability to take a char array in. So let's uh, do that then. Should we do it on a single line? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Or make it a little bit, let's see. Yeah, do it Do it on a, uh, a same line. Yeah. So what we want to do is to array first. That gives us an array of strings. Uh -huh. and do, sorry, array of characters. And then we want to initialize a new string with that array. Shall we try it again? Let's try it again. Run. So that test worked. Let's run all of them. And we have a correct result. Hey. 
Yes. Now, would you no. look at that? Perfect. Woo! Woo! So we, but this doesn't it's solve the. Uh, you found yeah, it. This like doesn't solve the uh, um, issue, though. The um, task. Our task isn't solved. Yeah, no, because we not? need to sum all of these as well. Oh, we need to sum them. That would them. be 12 plus 38 plus 15 plus 77, right? All the right. stuff we have up here. Then we need to, okay. I mean, well, that's easy. That's right. the easy part. Yeah, I right. think so. Public, actually, let's, this doesn't need test cases. This just needs to be a test. Right? Public void. Um, on valid string uh, list. Uh, on valid multi line string outputs some upper corrects, correct sum. Yeah. Should we try that? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. At all. On valid multi-line string outputs correct sum. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a bit hard to write these uh, examples, I think. So let's set up our AAA. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what and it is? The AAA? The yeah, and then you have the 4A know. if you have assume as well. So let's arrange this first. So let's head on over to Advent of Code, and we're going to grab this entire string. So, sorry if I'm driving everything here. Uh, let's create a multi line um, and name as well. So, a multi line string. What we want to do is var calculated equals calculator. I need to copy this so we actually have a calculator. Like so, okay, calculate. Uh, we have calculate row. Should we have a calculate? Uh, Task, just execute yeah, task, that. because this is the task, right? Right. Let's go with that. It's called ex execute task. Oh. And we'll send in the input. Okay. Okay. Before you go, before you go further, um, yep. we have to, like, at least say all of the, um, the leaderboard is full, folks. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All the it's leaderboard is full, good. so we check so the rules, good. and we are allowed to stream once the leaderboard is full. So yep, so we're gonna finish this out, but and we're not violating yeah. any of the rules of the community. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Mm. So let's grab the correct result because that is the same list, right? Mm -hmm. Then we can do var. Uh, actually, that's gonna be up in the range, I think. Um, and expected total would be um, correct results mm -hmm. dot sum. Mm -hmm. And this gives us a string int and output value. So that would be a key value. And we want to sum up the value. I think that's correct. Right. Now, do we want to put No, that in it wants a key value pair. Never mind. Key value pair string uh, int kv and no secondary. And we want to return kv dot value, right? Mm hmm. Yep. Let's actually do an assume here. Now we've set this up. But our arrange contains logic. Okay. Yep. So let's do an assume and check that our logic output uh, what we expected. 
uh, r equal. I can never remember if it, we should use r same or r equal or whatever. Let's check expected. Now oh, it's the second one. So let's do that. And actual is expected total. And now we can do something very advanced. Okay, do... what's that? That later. Oh. 12 plus 38 plus 15 142. plus 77. 142. Are you ahead of me? Oh, I, yes. Yes, I am. I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, we're... So now we can now we check the logic here uh -huh. against a pre calculated value. And that is because we already know all of these. Right. Yeah. And they're the same as up there. So. Now we have execute task and then we want to assert and that would be that search r equal the expected value would be expected total and the other one would be uh, calculated right i think our yep. test is done let's jump on over to here again I'm going to create a public function. Okay. Let's clean this up a tiny bit. Public and execute task yeah. with that. So this is a multi-line string now. So first thing we need to do is we got to split it, split it up into rows, right? Uh-huh. Our input rows equals... Um, I think there's a good way of splitting into rows. Again, let's do it the good old fashioned way, right? String split into uh, multiple rows. And let's maybe add .NET as well. Document that split? I don't know. Uh, best way to split a string into lines. Yeah, they just say split and oh, R and okay. N. This answer uh, is from 2009. Spring, uh, so. See so here they use split for delimiters. We could do it that way. Yeah, we can do. And then what the, um, so look, here's what I see. See if this works. Uh, where are you? Well, I'm gonna have to. Oh, uh, you know. Where what? did you send it? I haven't sent it yet. Okay. Uh, hold on, copy. Again, this would be the extremely brute force way to do it, but there should be a better way of splitting. Document split. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So almost what I was doing. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Only I had both the uh, carriage return and new line as well. Ah, okay. Cool. And we remove an empty entries. I think there should be a better way of doing it, right? There I'm should be. Sure. Yeah. Let's create a int total. Set that to zero. For each our row in input rows, we'll loop over all the rows in our input string. We'll say total plus equals, and we'll do calculate row. Now we have a unit test that tests each row. And now we're also building a unit test to like test the entire thing. So this would be more like an, I think it's called an integration test because it tests more than a single small mm -hmm. piece, right? Sure, yep. Let's turn the total. So that's done. And this is done. Do you think the test will pass? I'm actually uh, open to betting more than last time. More that it, that it will fail? No, I think it'll work. I, I think it'll work. I was going to say, I think it'll work. Yeah, so let's try it. Run the test. Bye, Azzy, later. 
Yeah, find a laser, and it's a green laser. Hey. It works. Perfect. We have a result. Let's add a UI to this, shall we? Ah, let's yeah. do it. Console right line. Um, let's do uh, our advent of code day one calculate calculator come type enter uh, rows press enter for the next row press enter on an empty row to exit and calculate see we even have a help Right, so we want to do string input would be um, nothing. Oh, is that? Yes. Do you have? Um, oh, well, let's set, let's set that to a space, right? Yes. That's okay. just so we have right. some kind of input. Oh. Uh, it's okay. so we have some kind of input because then we can do a while loop. Ah. Oh, right? Uh huh. Okay. So we want to check while input equals console read line is not equal to string not empty. Now we're doing multiple things in a single line. Maybe that's a bit too complicated. So let's do it that way instead. And this means, no wait, that's not smart. Because in this case, you can't skip it entirely. The, the input. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Uh, we could do it like this. This means a tiny little bit of repeated code. So we'll read a line first. Uh huh. And then we'll do a do file input. Sorry, not string is null or white space. But, okay, I like that. I like that. Okay. Yep. Now we'll do do our thing, and then uh, input equals console dot read line. Yep. So first we do our thing, and then we reset the input to the next uh, entry. Okay. And what we want sense. to do on input would be string um, full problem input. And this should be a, yeah, let's do this string. Ooh, let's do this all proper like list of strings, right? Because it's multiple strings. Yes, it like is. So, strange. and I always yes. prefer to use var when I can. Uh -huh. There. So let's just put this at the end. Add input. That's the only logic we have here. So that should give us a list of strings. Um, as long as you don't hit just enter. Calculating. Total. Oh, so you make it fancy. <laughs> you make it fancy. Okay, I see you over there, Eric. All right. <laughs> yeah. okay. So we have calculating total. How do we do this? Because now we have a list of strings. All right. Full string. So. We want to join this, right? Mm, you want to join each line from? Yeah, into a single multi-line string, right? So I, I would, mm, no, hold on. Yes, hold on. We need to do something with that variable. See what's in there. 
yeah, spring dot joint. That's what I was coming out with first. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah, okay. Because I mean, but, but, um, well, when I, I when I thought about this is it, how I'm you like, use is it? Sharp or is that sequel? Yeah, I huh? think it's this way at least. I think it's this way at least. Um, I'm I'm looking at it. I think that it, it looks right. Let me let me double check though. So you got a separator, um, mm-hmm. which you have there, and hold on, string that join. I think you do it like left, right, and that. Mm. So I think Where's rest left? becomes left. We have yeah, left, but... we have right, and we have rest. I think that's how it works, right? String, inner key. It's looking for an actual string um, for the first value. So what's... Mm, uh-huh. It's complaining about something. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, string string that? Okay, so I'm got the wrong number of parameters. How about if we right. ask using link? That did nothing. Change yeah, you need to a grid string. Join. No, that can't be right. What do I need? I think you need because I'm looking at left. And where do we have yeah. left? defined and is it a string is left a string because i think, I think it's think a, string. a string yeah so i think it okay. should be like that and this would also be a string right right okay hmm. why is it still yeah, but there's then? no overload that takes one argument so let's look at our overloads and thanks for the follow our herman uh, inner the sequence to join to the first sequence. The documentation here is horrible. So let's do the usual thing. Join, let's say dot net. Join multiple strings. Six hmm. different ways to join strings. Yep. Can- Oh, what about, um, hmm. you can do it, like, you could just do plus, you can just add the plus. There's option. a string join right. here. Right. Yeah. And that's what we were. The problem with the plus is that we'll need to loop over the list. I figured if there was, you know, like an actual function. To do it. Um, okay. What about string format? String, string concat. So here what we about have string multiple strings. String what? String builder. Oh, string concat works too, though. Or yeah, uh, no, string join, and then just oh, am I? Overcomplicating things, something fierce. Let's try this. So we have let's do string dot join. This is the separator. Environment dot new line, which is what we want to separate them from with, and then we have the input. That should give us a string. Or, yeah, should give us one single string with all of the uh, inputs on each oh on one line, right? One line each. Yeah, string that join. Okay. Yeah. Let's create the calculator. A new, like so. Uh, Result equals uh, calculator dot execute task with full string. And let's write this out. Right line. 
the result of calculation is salt. And this needs a dollar sign to get a interpolated string. Right. String interpolation. Yep. Should we try this? What do you think? Try it? Let's try it. Let's fire the laser. I think it's going to work. Uh, it might. Advent of code calculators. So let's do A, B, 1, C, D, 1. D, E, 2, F, G, 9. So this would give us 11 plus 29, should be 40, uh -huh. if I hit enter now. So we had a breakpoint here. OK. And did it. Run it. Yeah. Is 40. Hey. Hey, let's That's try right. That's one right. more, shall we? Try another. Should we try all of these? Because we know we know what they should end up like. Yeah, we uh, know it should be 142. Right. So let's do them have... all. Yeah, let's yeah. do them all. So, and trebuchet. And the blank and line, 142. Have... And it that worked. is what we expected. It worked. Shall we run the um, task on the side? On the side. Say that again. Should we uh, get our puzzle input and submit an answer? Yes. Get your get our puzzle input. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get some input. Oh, I do. Oh my gosh. Oh. So what I think we'll oh. do is we will uh, go into program. We will kill that line. We will kill Can these we... lines. We'll know, do Eric. bar full string equals multi-line string. Let's just put that there instead. All of that. Yeah, so we just created one long string with all of these. Uh huh. With new lines in between. New line separation. Yep. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And then we calculate it. Shall we? Fire the laser. According to this, it should be crash. Dun, dun, why is dun. it crash? Not I have bad. an idea. And the issue is, if we have a line without any numbers in it, what will it do? Oh, let's try and write a new test. Test uh, public void on string without numbers uh, throws exception. Right, but did or it not throw an exception? Would equal A B C. I think it ate the exception. It was hungry? What do you mean it ate the exception? What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it didn't break on it, more or less. Search Interesting. Ex uh, oh, hi, Don. Throws. Yeah, there we go. Throws. Uh, what did we say? Format exception, right? Yeah, we did a format exception. It verifies the delegate, throws a particular. Hmm. So. I have no idea how this works. Ooh, let's see. What would X be here? Um, okay, so input. Let's grab a calculator okay. first. Grab a calculator? We have calculate row, input. 
what do we want it to be here? Should it be zero? Yeah, because we don't want it to add. Yeah. Let's yeah, set it add. to zero. Awesome. And we really don't yeah, want it to throw an test. exception. We no, we need to catch it somewhere. Okay. But if our input is going to have... Um, D contains no digits. Let's head into calculate row. And in here, let's do a try catch. Okay. Exception. Ah. We don't care about the about what it says. Let's just return a zero if we can't read it, right? Now we have right. another problem, but that's easily solved, and that is that we add the first digit and last digit variables inside of the try catch. So first digit, last digit. And we'll remove those two. Does that make sense? Um, it. So, so we're, we're not, doing the we're same thing going, as we did before. We're catching the exception, and then instead yeah. of breaking, we're returning a zero. Yeah, because we got the okay. exception out when we sent yep. an ABC. Okay. Let's run this test again, see what it does. It and me. it worked. It passed. Hey. Yeah. Shall we try running this again? Let's run it. The program. And I have no idea what just happened. Output. Is this an issue with my thingamajig. Let's, let's add some output, shall we? Output. Let's start way up in the top. Well, we have calculating total up there, so we should mm -hmm. always get that. Right. So what's going on here? I think I have some kind of issue with my terminal, unfortunately. I mean, it says this multiple times. Huh. Let's put a breakpoint down here. It's not the right way, but it's definitely a way. And F5 again. We hit the breakpoint, and the result was 56,465. Grab that. Uh-huh. And put it and on in there. That, that's the right answer. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. We got it. We got it. We got it. I thought like yeah. we need to have like a, a jam session now. Like Definitely. <laughs> you know what I'll do? I'll go get my mascot. Give me one second. Hey, go get him. You get a gold star. 56,000. What was it? Here's the mascot. Oh, and please. she's actually purring, even though I'm doing this. Aww. Hi, kitty. What's her name? Zelda. Zelda. Hello, Zelda. All right, you have yeah. to do that answer so I can put it in, though. Huh? 56,000 what? Uh, hold on, I'll send in the private chat so no one gets to steal it from us. <laughs> so I think we all got the same inputs, Everybody right? Everybody saying adorable. And Don, uh, okay, so we got folks from uh, LinkedIn watching. Don says, this is awesome. Thank you, Don. James says, all oh, adorable. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and... Spell is great. Zelda is awesome. Yeah. His cam. Oh. Oh, your cam is like a delayed surveillance cam. That's what uh, TMK DK. Did you, did you see that in the uh, Streamlabs? Uh, sorry, the StreamYard chat? Yes, I did. 
Yeah, um, that is one of my Twitch uh, emotes. And it's the cat. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, your cat? Is that is that yeah. Zelda? Yeah, nice. that's actually Zelda. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So did you enter the answer? That's not and the did right it work? Answer. Your answer is it's not the right hard. answer. Okay, so uh, it gives us a different sure. input. I it gives us different input. Aha, that's okay. Could though. you uh, send me your full string and I'll input it for you? Yes. This is going to be long. It is. How do you get it? Uh, well, well, like, why not? Is it too long? Let's see, pace. Maybe not. Worst case, send it in Maybe a text file. No. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that then. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to send it via email because that's, like, that's where I got you. Yeah, go ahead. So while um, Tara so awesome. is getting the email in place, um, I'm streaming on Twitch under Thindle. You can see my name in the chat there on um, StreamYard. I'm not sure if it shows up on LinkedIn. Um, I could post a direct link to there. I usually stream on Tuesdays. And oh, cool. Currently, cool. I'm streaming... Um, migrating from .NET Framework over to .NET 8 for a full big project, which is taking a while, but we're do we're making progress. And when I'm not doing that, I'm uh, doing mostly Blazor things, just testing out because I'm in the middle of learning Blazor. So how about you? When you're not doing Advent of Code, what are you uh, coding? Could you what am I streaming? open my email? Um, you know, so I am actually on uh on Twitch at Black Girl CTL, which I will put in the um yeah. in the chat here. And I, yeah. you know, I do a little bit of everything. So I've been doing um leak code type things to just sharpen my knife because I'm like, what can I stream? But I actually, so mm -hmm. I have a startup. Right? Um, it's called C Tracks, and it's written in. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna laugh. It's it written in Laravel because, oh. like, at the time when we wrote it, like when we when we started, you know, we didn't have a bunch of .NET developers, and to, you know, to I didn't mm -hmm. want to write it by myself. I wanted to be able to, you know, have some help. And we were on a shoestring budget, so we were like, let's figure out how to get this done. So we got some folks um, to help us write it in Laravel, too. And so now what I'm thinking about doing is going back and rewriting C-Tracks in uh, .NET Core. Oh, and yeah, I think another... that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm thinking about doing and, and doing that on stream. Yeah. And uh, it's a web application, right? Yeah, it's a web app. Yeah. Um, and we have a companion mobile app I'm doing that part. Mm -hmm. I didn't. But that <laughs> means you can do HTTP so calls, go get results, and then compare them to your calculated res results, right? So you can do testing. Say that again? Yeah, if you can make HTTP calls into the old application, you can write tests for your new application. For the new app, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, to make sure that oh. your you know feature, not feature complete, but feature equal or right. Exactly. You know what that's, I mean. That everything exactly works the same way. Things. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's the thought. I'm like, let's see, rewrite C tracks yeah. or yeah, because I'm looking for. You know, something interesting to do in low pressure to do on yeah. stream. Yeah. So that's the I think thought. It sounds 
great. And you could integrate all zero to it. Yes. You know, yeah. people like it's funny because I work for off zero and I have people hitting me up from off zero on, on my C tracks email about would you like to give off zero a try? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You could just flag me, right? Like, yeah, they really know what they're doing, right? Oh, that's so funny. Um, yeah. yeah. So this is awesome. This was awesome. Did you get my email? Let me just jump up. There we go. I have your data. Let me run this. And we got a result of 55538. I'll send in the chat. Woo woo. Oh, so that ought to work. Yay. Okay. So all of this, right? And they tell you not to stream it, they tell you not to share the answers, and the answers are different for everybody. Uh, I think the code is the thing, you know, showing how to solve the problem. But since the leaderboard is already full, you can't get on the leaderboard now because it's the first 100 that solved the problem. Because there's only, you know, there's only pass and fail. Right. There's no in between. So the leaderboard is about time. So since the time is up for today, uh, we can stream it. Yeah. That's what the, you know, request rules now, the rules, but not really harsh rules. It's more, please don't do this. Right. So, this I, should I was, be fine. I was, ready, I was ready to get my hand hit by a ruler. <laughs> Did you enter the number and it worked? I hope yeah, it should. It worked. I get a gold star. Awesome. Oh, Yay. great. Great. Thanks yeah. so much, Eric, well, for coming hey, on. Thank you. This has been great. This has been great, despite our little technical yeah. difficulties. But thank you for driving. And yeah, it and happens. Yeah. So next time you're driving, right? Yeah, next time I got it. Yeah. How long is the vacation? How long how long is your um, cruise? Five days. It's a five, five day cruise. And oh, I am gonna that be sounds offline. Wonderful. I am so mm. excited. That sounds wonderful. Yep. But you'll We're be back sometime now. next week then, or are you off for longer? Oh no, I'm gonna be I'll be back the eleventh and I'm streaming every day doing um doing Advent of Code. So let's try the, to do this again then. Yeah. And you could drive next time. And I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Bet. All yeah. right. Awesome. Thank you everyone awesome. for watching and yeah. until next time. Yeah. Take care. Peace. <laughs>